Welcome to Home Ties, a podcast about staying connected to home, no matter where you are. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily those of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Times of transition are always difficult to maneuver. The shock of abrupt change dislodges deep-seated insecurities and fears from the depths of people's souls, and vile comments bubble up to the surface. I was transitioning from my ministry in the northwestern Bulgarian town of Vidin to starting a new mission outreach in the southeastern town of Plovdiv. In the five years I spent working on the banks of the Danube River, God had used me to start two Roma congregations. In addition, we were serving a Bulgarian congregation in the city and two other preaching stations. How could I even think about stepping away from my duties? Well, the first Bulgarian pastor of the Lutheran Church had been working with me for several years, first as an understudy and then as co-pastor. It was time for him to step up and take over. Our mission vision from day one was to train Bulgarian men as pastors so that they could serve their countrymen. I was working myself out of a job and making a graceful exit. Well, I made my exit, but it wasn't very graceful. I had not considered that others might not be as excited about starting a new mission as I was. I did not consult them ahead of time to see what their feelings were about me leaving them. I didn't consult them because it's never a good idea to ask for feedback if you're not willing to listen to it. I had made up my mind to leave, and it made perfect sense to our American mission team. We were the ones paying the bills, right? In hindsight, it may have been a good decision, but implementation was very poor. When I informed my Bulgarian colleague that he would be taking over the Roma ministry, He said he couldn't do it. He was too busy. He didn't have the time or the resources to take on the extra responsibilities. Uh, Never mind that the church he was serving at the time only had five members. My response to him? Not one I'm proud of. I don't remember exactly what I said, but my tone was less than loving. Tempers flared emotions escalated, and I just walked out of the meeting with dark clouds and lightning swirling around my head. About a half an hour later, the tempest cleared and sanity returned. By that time, I realized just how much was at stake. This was much more than a personality conflict. It had implications for our work with the Roma, my colleagues' continued ministry, as well as my own ministry. So I walked back over to my colleague's house and ate crow. I apologized for unleashing my tongue. I validated his concerns about having to take on the additional responsibilities. In the end, I stuck with my plan and relocated my family to the city of Plovdiv. And four months later, I was back in the U.S. with no visa and no job. My Bulgarian colleague soldiered on by himself for about a year, and then he resigned. I'm not going to say that my decision to leave was the cause for that resignation, nor do I regret making that decision to leave. I do, however, realize that I did not always provide my colleague A good example, I regret that I did not tame my tongue on that occasion and on several others.
In a previous episode on this podcast, I've compared myself to a 900-pound gorilla who recognizes neither his strength nor the damage he can cause with his careless actions. It takes a lot of self-discipline for me as an American expat to live in a foreign country. I have to constantly remind myself that I am a guest in someone else's house. I cannot get bent out of shape when locals say or do things that make me feel taken advantage of. How can I expect to be treated just like everyone else when I do not live like a local? How can I expect people to give me a break when I don't have to deal with the kinds of day-to-day -day hardships that others face? I am a 900-pound gorilla who not only can break a table by slamming my fist down on it, I can break people's hearts with my tongue. It's not my job to draw attention to the country's poor roads and broken infrastructure, government corruption, social inequities, or the small-minded thinking by some people. People already know these things, and they feel badly enough without some foreigner rubbing their noses in it. When the book of Titus, chapter 2, the Apostle Paul writes, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Now, before the pandemic, I had a membership at a local gym. I didn't care much for the music that my fellow weightlifters played on the gym's PA. Songs by American rap artists using four-letter words profusely bragging about their sexual exploits. I wonder if these guys even understood how offensive this music sounds. Swear words in a foreign language don't sound as bad as the ones in your mother tongue. Well, every one of us Christians is living in a foreign country. The world is under the influence of Satan. He tries to convince us that it's a fun place to live. We don't belong here. It is important for us as Christians to exercise strict control over our speech and behavior at all times because we are being watched. We are ambassadors of our heavenly king. He came to this world not to condemn it, but to redeem it. Everything we say and do will either validate his mission or contradict it. And all of us have to admit that we have let our tempers get the best of us. It's not just about using better communication techniques to deal with conflict. Sometimes we just want to let loose with self-righteous, pharisaical anger. Is it any surprise that the people of the world respect Christ but cannot stomach his followers? We trip over our tongues and stumble on our faces. It's only by God's grace that we have not fallen out of his favor. Jesus leashed his tongue and remained silent as a lamb before his accusers, so that the hellish accuser cannot make any of his charges against us stick in God's courtroom. Jesus announced the dawning of God's favor for all people, for us who walk in the light of his love, as well as those still lost in darkness. And Jesus has made us eager to live in this foreign land. Jesus has put us here among people who do not speak with his words. They do not love us, but Christ wants us to love them. 
They do not want us here, but Christ wants them in heaven. And Jesus will remind us of our limitations. Jesus will help us see our dependence on him. Jesus will show us our weaknesses so that we turn to him for strength. It is his will for us to model Christian speech and to show the good side of his church to outsiders. Uh, but we are weak and in so many ways woefully inept. So turn to God for his mercy. Rely on him to help you continually practice self-control over your body and tongue. You are his ambassador, and he will open your eyes and your heart to the opportunities he is putting before you. Next time on Home Ties. Where you go in life is determined by where you start from. While some of the circumstances of your birth can be mitigated by good nutrition and education, God has assigned you a role to play in his kingdom, and you will fulfill that role, willingly or not. We'll see you next time.